she said in her plan for black man, I'm gonna give a million uh non uh repayable loans of up to tw- up to twenty thousand dollars to black entrepreneurs. And then on the other uh policy said it said black and other entrepreneurs. So um I don't, I, don't, I don't know how that how that works, but they look for black men. She got a million slots that you can get in line for with everybody else to get. Also, um, she gonna she gonna get weed legalized on the federal mm-hmm. level, so you can smoke, you know, as much as your heart desires. Even though I don't think your heart desires smoke, it seems kind of weird because hearts and smoke. Right. But anyway, you can smoke a lot and then she going to work on, you know, getting you into the marijuana selling business in the, on the legal side. So, yay, that. Yay. And we, and then, you know, they're going to they're going to uh, set up some mentorship programs. Um, well, she's going to support the creation of mentorship programs for black men, you know, because we need a big brother. Um, so we'll have that. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I got, what I remember from her plan for black men. Um, oh, uh, an investment in the uh, things that ail us physically, like prostate cancer. And so they're going to make a big push to, you know, get your prostate checked out for black for black men um, specifically because we disproportionately, you know, affected by that. So right, I have my check. I'm fine. Hey. It's a blood <laughs> test now. Don't let them stick a finger in your booty. Okay. So that that that's what she said she was gonna do for black men. Did I did I leave anything out? Am I missing something? I don't know if you found the actual uh infographic or the literature behind it. Um nah that that, that seems seems pretty pretty close. Pretty good. Pretty close. Okay, I appreciate. Oh, we got we got something what what does it say? Uh Expanding pathways for black men to get good paying jobs. What did that say? I don't know. Uh you gotta if you wanna if you're gonna stop, I'ma read. I don't know what I've never seen this. So I'm gonna read it as you stop. She wanna ensure that black men can build wealth and achieve economic success by providing one million loans that are fully forgivable up to, of up to two thousand twenty thousand dollars to black entrepreneurs and others who have historically faced barriers to starting new businesses or growing an existing business in partnership with trusted organizations like mission driven lenders and banks with a proven commitment to their communities. Uh, it's the tried and true. Oh, this for black people, but also everybody else. Uh, oh, okie doke. It's, it's great. I mean, yay, that all that, um, expanding access to bank accounts. Cause you know, black men don't have that, uh, expand, Expanding access to bank accounts and lending to help black men build wealth. Wealth Vice President would also work with the private sector to expand access to affordable banking options that will allow black men and others who are locked out of the banking system and that and others. This is not a black man plan. This is a plan for this is a plan for poor people to get ahead. Why is it being touted? As a plan for black men, I, I mean, I guess because she didn't have one, and she just said, "Hey, look, the niggas is poor." So there you go. It's hey, a work for you. She's just doing all the things that affect poor people and putting black men's name in bold, but also the others qualify for this as well. So is it really a plan for black men, or are you just highlighting a hey, black men? You can apply for this too, along with everybody else. That's what it seems like she's doing to me. Am mm. I wrong? Am I, am I, am I, are you getting something different? Man, I'm not really getting anything different. However, I'm not seeing how any of this can be looked upon as bad. I mean, I could design something for a particular sect of people and then make it all inclusive. That way I get it across to uh, the ballot. Like, that's that's perfectly a logical thing to do. Hey, look, fam, when has that ever helped us out in the way that it was supposed to help us out? All the shit that they do, that they that they that they use in this in this vein, all the affirmative action, all the DEI, all that bullshit, 
And I say it's bullshit because the way it's implemented is just bullshit. It doesn't bode for us in the same way that it does for other people. And we've seen this play already. We know when they open it up for everybody, we still got to get to the back of the fucking line. So why are you acting like this is a thing for us when we all know we'll be at the back of the line for this one too? Affirmative action. Who was the biggest recipient of the benefits of that? Asian women. White women. White white women. White women. Hey, look, the Asians probably got to, they probably passed us up on benefits of it too. But hey, look, I was just saying the 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 the, the, the marathon the marathon runners um they in charge. They got it. We know who the winners is every year. Every year of these policies, these minority policies and shit, it ain't for black people. That's why they say minority and specifically don't say black people. If you go to, con- to the Congressional Hispanic Caucus and you look at their page, everything they got on there say Hispanic people and don't say nothing about black people or others. You go to the Asian page, it say everything about Asian people and don't say shit about others. Anytime anything has a black label on it, it also says on the other side, also everybody else. You can't keep acting like you're doing me a favor when you you, you obviously not. But then it's going to turn around and look at any black man that gets any help from any of these policies, if, if they do get enacted. It's going to be looked at as though you got a handout because you were the face of the handout, but you weren't the biggest recipient of it. So you're going to get all of the stigmatism behind it. Oh, look at him. He got that handout. That is basically corporate welfare. He couldn't have never had a company unless it was for him. Them. You going to get all the ad problems from it? Mm-hmm. You mean stigma, mother? We get the stigma. Yeah. The it, stigma. It, it said stigmatism. Mm-hmm. We gonna get bad eyes from the shit. Yep. Uh, thank you, producer, for putting up these from the Asian Caucus and the uh, Hispanic Caucus. I didn't see anything about others in there as well. Um, as I was skimming it, because you would think that, because this has been pointed out a long time ago, that they would, you know, change it and be like, "Man, Joe, everybody else, my bad." All right. Uh, what does this say? Since its establishment in 1971, the Congressional Black Caucus has been committed to using the full constitutional power, statutory authority, and financial resources of the federal government to ensure that African Americans and other marginalized communities in the United States have the opportunity to achieve the American dream. Uh, And the Asian peoples? The Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus is com- comprised of members of the Congress of Asian, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander descent, and members who have a strong dedication to promoting the well-being of the Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander community. Currently chaired by whatever, whatever, okay. whatever. Fan. Yeah, that's no what it is. Uh, the Congressional Hispanic Caucus was founded in December 1976 as a legislative, legislative service organization of the United States House and Rep- Rep- can't read of the United States House of Representatives. Today, the CHC is organized as a congressional member organization governed by the rules of the House of Representatives. The CHC addresses national and international issues and crafts policies that impact the Hispanic community. Period. I didn't say yeah. period. There's a period there. The function of the caucus is to serve as a forum for the Hispanic members of Congress to coalesce around a collective legislative agenda. The caucus is dedicated to voicing and advancing through legislative through the legislative process issues affecting Hispanics in the United States, Puerto Rico, and the Commonwealth of the Northern Marina Islands. Period. All right. Yeah, that's fucked. Pam. We the only ones that do this bullshit. Get it together, and we, Negroes. And we the only ones that fall for this bullshit. We the only ones that accept this as a thing for us when it's obviously a thing for everybody, even though we have all the evidence of things that were said to be for us, but were given to everybody else 
instead of us. And we act like it's a thing that they're a favor. All it is is a detriment to us. That's why DEI don't do don't that's why we don't never feel the effects of it, but we fight so fucking hard for it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We we don't it doesn't necessarily become a detriment to us, even though we benefit least from it. Y'all know it was black people in both of them groups. And who? In both of those groups that y'all that he just read off is black people in both of them groups. Hey, look, cool. Cool. You you in you in that group. Hey. All they got to All do right, is I'm not. I'm not in that group. I'm not. I'm not one of those black people that's in that group. I could. Hey, I could pass for some more. Hey, look, you fam, can. That's cool. nigga, that's you cool. can actually pass for all of those. I could pass for a lot. Asian <laughs> and Hispanic, so, nigga. So I'm straight. Puerto Rican. I'm in, I'm in the Hispanic group. Samoan. I'm in the Asian group. Yes, I qualify for both of those. Yes, let let look, those of us yeah. with normal color skin in the game discuss this. <laughs> I just, I, I, I mean, I'm just saying, the numbers are there. It's not for us ever, and I say it's a detriment to us because we get all the stigma associated with being people who need the handout. When we get individuals in these positions, they're often looked at as though they're the affirmative action hire, they're the DEI hire. You don't actually belong here. You're just placed here because of your color. All the while. All these other motherfuckers that are actually the affirmative action hires that aren't qualified to be there but are just placed there, they don't get any of that scrutiny. Nobody looks at them and say, you just here because you a white woman and we need more white, more white women. Nobody says that. Regardless of how they perform at their job, we get the stigma. Regardless of how we, regardless of how we perform, we can be, we can be the, the, the exemplary employee. Again, again, again. Let's let, let's not let's not let's not go too far now. There are a lot of women that get looked at as they only got their job because they are women. There's a fair amount of that. I'll give you. I'm not even gonna argue that, but I think that it doesn't still stigmatize them in that way. I, I, I don't. I you might have some, but I. I, I and not, between not, that and having to sleep their way to the top, I feel like they get. I think this is an argument of a bygone era. I think it rarely happens. I think people rarely get a stick. I think a motherfucker rarely walks into an office to see one black guy and say he's a affirmative action hire in these days. Rarely. I think there's a 90 year old white man do that. Motherfuckers think, motherfuckers think I, I know I think that most white motherfuckers could give a fuck about affirmative action. They gonna hire who they want to hire and let they let you be sued, and they actions prove that every day in the lawsuit. Rooney so rule. Not having mm-hmm. Hires there. And hey, look, the NFL did it with the Rooney rule in our face. If so you're not, if you're not familiar, if you're not familiar, it was. if you're not familiar with the Rooney rule, it is the rule that you have to interview a coach, a minority coach, or an African American coach in order to, you know. To, uh, to make it a fair process. You didn't have to hire them, but you had to interview one. And so yeah. they did for a while a lot of interviews of black people that didn't have a shot in hell of becoming the coach of that team. And then they hired their individual that they were going to individually hire. They started to get around the Rooney rule by just acting like these coaches were superstars and didn't have any interview process whatsoever and say, well, we're going to go with uh, Kyle Shanahan. He's our coach. He's just our coach. Period. We didn't do an interview. Pro- it was just, we just had him, and then we're done. They do that a lot now to circumvent the Rooney Rule, and so much so that they had to implement it like a lot of other shit. Like if you if you hire uh, minority assistant coaches or uh, uh, yeah, coordinators, you get uh, extra draft picks. I couldn't say coordinator for shit, <laughs> but coordinators, yeah. You'll get extra draft picks um, if a team hires yours. And if you hire one, I think you get extra bonuses, benefits, and shit like that because you hired a minority coach. So they incentivizing that particular thing. Nero bonuses. Yeah. Hero <laughs> bonuses. Hey. Like, like they, they turned us into goddamn um, 
like boxes of Cracker Jacks. Like, hey, get a prize. <laughs> Every new yeah, hire gets a prize. That's what they did. Turn niggas into straight charity cases. Yeah, and, and, and it's kind. Of, it sounds like it would kind of be a fucking distraction from the actual motherfuckers will fight that tooth and nail, and, and actually deny viable candidates just to not feel forced into doing that shit. I I I'd imagine that that happens with a lot of uh ninety nine percent white male billionaire class individual. Like they, they don't give a fuck what you say. I'm gonna do what the fuck I want to do. I mean, do we know a lot of billionaires at Caltown? I don't know of them that do. I think the blackness in my beard coming back. Nigga, your hair ain't never gonna come get blacker on his own. That's that. That's that Walt Frazier. Right, nigga. You got the comb in, comb in color. 